Yes, it's Monday, and we all know what that means. It's time to talk about ghosts with I, Kevin Eustace. How are you all doing, people? Hooray. If things sound a little bit better, that's because I've bought a pop stand. If you don't know what one of them is, it's a little piece of fabric that goes over your microphone so that you can say things like Peter Piper, and it doesn't go each time you say a P, a T, a D, or a B. Let's see if it works. Peter Piper picked a pepper. What pepper did he pick? Now, you should have heard that like I was next to you, as opposed to it being clearly through a microphone. I think it's a success. I think it is. I think we can say profanities to pubescent penguins any time we wish, and we shall never be brought up about audio quality again. Not that we ever have. But, moving on, we may well be interrupted by some very atmospheric sounds today on this microphone with the pop stand, pop, 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 and that's because we are due a thunderstorm here in England. Yes, we are. I mean, the entirety of England is going to be under a thunderstorm. No, we're due a thunderstorm here on Liverpool, and that's because we've had like two or three days of incessant heat, and finally, finally, it's going away. I despise the heat. It just makes me lethargic. It makes me depressed. It makes me not want to go anywhere. And then the rain comes, as it's raining right now, and everyone else goes, oh, and I go, yes. So after recording this, I might even drive down to the River Mersey and sit and bask in the rain like a proper morbid goth. Hooray. Anyway, we have a wonderful show, as usual, he says, very boastfully. And uh, bees there. You notice I'm doing a lot of bees and peas if I can get them in. No, we do have a great show for you today. We've, of course, got Becca's Reddit Corner. Said a big bee there for Becca. And um, she's going to fill us in on maybe another paranormal thing that's taken place in the house. Maybe it has, maybe it hasn't. I think it has, or I'm not too sure myself, actually, but we'll find out. But before we do anything to do with the future of the show in today's episode, oh, by the way, it's season two, isn't it? Because I very apropos of nothing decided last episode was the end of season one because it was the 40th episode. So why not? So welcome to season two, everyone. Hooray. Can we get a round of applause? Well, if you're doing it on your own, it's not around, really. But let's say people are doing it throughout the country. Anyway, so yeah, it's the first episode of season two. Nothing's going to change. But anyway, so yeah, we're going to have Becca's Reddit Corner later on. And of course, we're going to review something paranormal. So you don't have to do it yourself. And we're going to have your amazing true listener ghost stories. So I can't wait to get started on this episode. But before we do, we need to say a big thank you to all of you wonderful Patreons. Hooray! Patreon keeps the show going, it literally does, and when you sign up to Patreon, not only do you receive all of the extra content that we give to our patrons, which is two shows each and every week, yes it is, although we had a bit of a nightmare yesterday, we went to Sefton Park with the handheld, and I won't blow into this uh, new pop stand because it's new, but basically the wind ruined it, and I had to put an old episode out, which was really sad, I did manage to put out like 15 minutes of what we recorded, but a lot of it was ruined by wind. Because I forgot the windsock. Who takes a windsock out in 32 degree heat? Not I, it turns out. But I should have. But anyway, I didn't. But you do get two episodes each and every week. One is me rambling, like I'm doing now. And the other one is a paranormal one, normally. And yeah, not only do you get all that, but I also sing your name out as a bit of a thank you. And we have a list of people to say thank you to this week. And I'm going to turn them into yet another non-rap song. And that is Martin Robinson, Alison Smith, Jackie Spencer, Ghost Cats, dun, 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 dun. Martin Green, Morag Woods, Stephen Rash, Noah Parker, and Katie. Well, thank you guys for signing up. And this little song might not be little given the number of names, but it is still for you. The guitar is well and truly out, as that noise, quite frankly, told us all. And this song is for you guys. Martin Robson, Alison Smith, Jackie Spencer too. Then there's ghost cats. Do, 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 do. Martin Green, Morag Woods, and you, Stephen Rash, Noah Parker. Then not to forget Katie as well. End it on a seventh, because that's what we do here on Wintag. Thank you so much, guys. It really means the world to me. You can become a Patreon by signing up at patreon.com forward slash we need to talk about ghosts. Now, let's have a paranormal review, shall we? <laughs> yes, it's time for a paranormal review, where I review something paranormal, you know the rest. Anyway... Today's Paranormal Review is a podcast, and it was a podcast that was suggested by one of you wonderful listeners. 
Now, occasionally when you suggest something, I'll check it out and think, eh, it's brilliant, you know, it's fair play to them, but it's not my cup of tea. And other times I'm like, ooh, this holds a little spark of interest. And one of those shows is this one. It's called Strange Familiars, and it's been suggested by a few of you guys. Now, what's different about Strange Familiars is that they will sometimes do, like, story format, but sometimes they will go out on location and, like, record in the area that the story's about, if you like. So I'm going to read a blurb from their website, which describes what they do much better than I ever could. Strange Familiars is a paranormal podcast that tells stories through a combination of historical research witness interviews, discussion, and on-site recordings when possible. Join Timothy and his rotating They don't put that. I messed that up. And his rotating cast of co-hosts, Alison, Chad, John, and James, as they legend trip into unknown and forgotten places. Now, if that doesn't float your boat, I don't know what will. I've started binging this over the last week, and um, I'm loving what they're doing. I'll be perfectly honest. I really am. I'm not yet up to date, but I can see that the most recent episode is called The Living Ghost, and it appears to be about a hermit. Yes. So not necessarily paranormal there, but still interesting. And I'm going to use a phrase which is overused, bandied about by everyone, and I'm not a big fan, but it seems to fit here. So they seem to go to, wait for it, liminal spaces. Oh, anyway, they do. And it's dead good how they present it. It's very laid back. It's very conversational. You know, if you like something on in the background to do with the paranormal or weird things in general, whilst you're doing whatever you do with your lives, maybe you're doing taxidermy. I don't know. But as you're stuffing that hedgehog, you could have nothing better on in the background to do to give a little bit of distraction to your job. Kind of a gruesome job, really. But go and check it out. Strange Familiars. It's on wherever you get your podcasts from. And it's two thumbs up to the sky. Yes, it's time for my favourite part of the show, where we get to talk about your true paranormal experiences. Uh, That para pa 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 paranormal experiences. Anyway, it just started raining outside, and the windows are indeed open. So if you do hear any sort of rain or thunder, then let's just go with the flow. You know, it's all atmospheric, isn't it? It all helps to create an atmosphere. Anyway, our first email today comes in from Charlie, and he writes, Hi, Kevin. Hi. Becca. Hi. And the neighbour's cat. Mow. Ooh. I say, neighbour's cat. My name's Charlie, I'm 21, and I'm from Ireland. Three good things there, Charles, we like that. I've recently been binge listening to your podcast. I've caught up on the dark paranormal, and I've listened to almost all of We Need to Talk About Ghosts. Why, thank you, Charlie, that's very nice of you. I've decided to email you about my experience in the apartment I live in during my second year of college. My second year of college happened during the height of the pandemic, so me and my roommate did all of our classes online and only left our apartment for grocery shopping, so I accept we may have simply gone crazy being inside almost constantly. Well, let's find out. This is Charlie's story. It started with thinking I saw a person standing in my peripheral vision, but when I turned, it was gone. I choked it up to my bad eyesight until my roommate told me she thought she was going mad, seeing a man standing in the apartment but when she turned, there was nothing there. Then, the cold spot started happening. Our apartment was well insulated and had good heaters and was a nice, cosy place. But suddenly, we would be walking around and you'd suddenly be very cold for a second and then be fine again. If you took a step back to where you felt the cold, it would be warm again. If me and my roommate were sitting on the couches, one arm would suddenly go cold but if you moved away from it, you'd be okay. We joked about a ghost sitting next to us being responsible for the cold arms. Then came the dreams. I started having a recurring dream about a young girl sitting on the foot of my bed, watching me sleep. I mentioned it to my roommate and she told me she was having a recurring dream about a goat skeleton with eyes standing over her while she slept. We were both creeped out but didn't give it much credit. The dream that convinced me something was genuinely wrong with the apartment was when I was sure I was awake looking at a man who was bent over like a crooked cane, dressed in an old-fashioned clothes and standing at the foot of my bed. So his torso was directed towards me, but because of the way he was bent he was faced towards my roommate also. I was telling her about the dream in the morning and I got as far as a man dressed in old-fashioned clothes in the room 
and my roommate interrupted me to say, and he was bent over weirdly with a top hat on. I was terrified. She'd had a dream about the same man, but in her dream the man was facing me with his torso towards her. That dream repeated sporadically until the end of the year, and we moved to another apartment in the same building the following year and had no strange experiences. Sorry for the spelling mistakes and the length of this email, and thank you for your podcast. Hey, don't apologise for grammar in this show, no siree. As long as you can be understood, you know, and the point of your story is across, you can write it however you want. No no worries about mistakes. The worst people in the world, I think, are when you're trying to tell a, a story to someone, and they start correcting you mid-story. I've had it with people where you're like, so I lent this book from the library, and they're like, you borrowed a book from the library, carry on. You're like, what? And I don't even know whether that's the right way around. It doesn't matter, as long as you can be understood. If you interrupt somebody mid-flow as they're telling you a story because they've said to you the wrong word, then you're a tit, and you should be treated as such for the rest of the day, if not your life. Anyway, that might be a bit extreme, but thank you for your email, Charlie. Certainly a lot to consider there. Collective dreams are an interesting one. I haven't personally experienced anyone saying I've had the same dream as you, but I do believe it takes place. I certainly do. But also that image that your friend had of a goat, a goat skeleton, indeed, with eyes looking at her while she sleeps. That's nice, isn't it? It's like Baphomet, though, isn't it? You know, so is it an evil demonic thing you got going on there? We just don't know. Anyway, thank you so much, Charlie, for your email. Our next email comes in from Wendelin. That's a lovely name. Anyway, they write, hello, Kevin. Hi. Becca, hi, and the neighbour's cat, Mao. Oh, I have sent a story before and promised to send more. This is one of my favourite and fondest memories. Well, let's get to it, shall we? Back in 2007, my elder sister had adopted a dog from a neighbour who was giving the dog away. At first, my family was a bit miffed because she would always leave the dog with us when she went away for periods of time with her ex-husband. We all ended up falling in love with that dog. She was a small, black, long-haired chihuahua mixed with a Labrador. Her name was Blackie. She was the most adorable dog ever. She loved to dress up. She literally strutted like a model on the runway whenever we put on her favourite black and white coat. She always chose my bed by my feet to sleep. She always followed me when I got ready for school, like she was making sure I was getting ready. She would then go and check on my younger sister and give a bark at her if she was still in bed. We all said good morning to Blackie and we always said goodbye when we left. It was a weird arrangement, almost like a child custody. One weekend she would go to my family, the next to my sister's ex-husband's family. Though we didn't know why, they already had three large dogs. Well, one weekend it was our weekend to have her. Brother-in-law's family wanted her, so my sister let them. I won't lie, we were absolutely offended by this. The next night, we received a call from my sister. Blackie had run out of the front door and got hit by a truck. The arsehole never stopped. Blackie was dead from the blow to her head. I don't think I've ever seen my family so distraught. We immediately went over to see her, and they had her on the bed. She looked so peaceful and so unnaturally still. I have never seen my father cry, but he did that night. He was sobbing. We all were. And she was buried in their backyard. As life is, it continued on, but she left a large hole. About a week or two later, we were getting ready for school and I felt her following me like our previous routine. I said absentmindedly, Good morning, Blackie. I'll feed you in a bit. I even glanced at her usual spot by the heater, where she would usually wait, and I saw her tail dance out of sight. I shouted, Blackie? And rushed to look, but it was empty. I told myself it was my grief making me see her. At night, I would feel a small shape by my feet. I would also hear the clickety-clack of her claws on the kitchen linoleum during the day or night. This went on for about two weeks until I spoke to my mother and younger sister when we'd come home from school. They also both admitted seeing and feeling her presence too. They saw her tail brush by the hallway curtains and the curtains would sway as if a small dog had walked through them. 
we would all find a chew bone we knew wasn't there previously. We knew she was here for us. She knew she was missed. And she was letting us know that she was there. We also knew we had to let her go. My mother, my younger sister and I sat on the couch and spoke aloud. Blackie, we know you're still here and thank you. Blackie, you need to cross over. You don't need to stay here. We know you love us. Blackie, go on ahead and wait for us on the other side. We love you and miss you so much. We're sorry you're being held by us, but please, cross over and wait for us there. Goodbye, Blackie. She left and we never saw her again in our peripheral vision. No more curtains swaying, no more clickety-clack in the kitchen. It was so hard to say goodbye, but I am so glad we got to. I'm glad she knew we loved her so much and I'm glad she gave us the closure we desperately needed. I can't wait to see Blackie again. Wendy. Wow. Now, I've said many a time before, and you'll all know what I say. I say, you know what? I'm not interested in pet stories. I want to be scared. I want to be scared. I think the real reason is I, I'm, I don't deal with emotion very well. And um, I, I broke down during that. Well, not broke down, but I couldn't carry on. And if you want proof of that, listen to this. And wait for us there. Goodbye, Blackie. She left and we never saw... Fucking hell. (laughs) Yes, I was laughing, but that was laughing with tears in my eyes. Laughing with tears in my eyes. Anyway, because I don't do sad emotion like that. If you tell me, and then my grandmother of 92 years old had her spine ripped out of her neck... And the devil himself danced with it like it was a scarf. I'll be like, yes, fucking hell, that's terrifying. If you say a story like what you just heard, I'm going to break down like an emotional mess. So, Wendelin, thank you very much for sending that story in. What a beautiful, beautiful story. But anyone listening, please don't send those stories in because I can't handle them emotionally. Mm, True facts. Anyway, we're now going to pop over to Becca's Reddit corner. And as you will know, if you've been listening, she's not been on for a couple of weeks. So we need to get her and hold her down for a certain amount of time in this episode. Well, it's episode one of season two, so she should do a bit of a stint, if you ask me. Earn her keep. She won't like that. But yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to head over to Becca's Reddit corner right now. Ladies and gentlemen, now it is time for Paranormal Reddit Corner with Becca. How are you, Beck? How are you? How are you? <laughs> I'm all right. You okay? Maurice. Ma- Ma- Maurice, we're going to do today's whole, whole Becca's Reddit corner okay. in St. Helen's accent, if that works for thee. I, I can do that, yeah. No, right. you're clearly you can't. You just, Bloody can. You just tried and you failed. I did not. You did? There's no such thing. I'll go to a foot of our stairs, you failed. How oh, rude. Anyway, let's stop that. It's offensive to anyone who is from St. Helen's. But, not that I can. So, how have you been anyway? Yeah, I'm okay. Yeah, um, I'm good. We had a, a bit of a wasted time yesterday, didn't we? We went to Sefton Park because this recorded wind instead of anything else. Oh, yeah, nightmare. We, the annoying thing is we even tested it. You said it might be a bit breezy, you know, so I said we'll test it, and you tested it, and yeah. it seemed fine when we listened back, but then obviously you got back later and heard it properly. Yeah, I felt really bad because you'd be devastated. I was devastated because it's, it, it's you know, it's just a waste. It's not a waste of time because we still went to the park. But anyway, um, just take a windsock everywhere. That's the motto for that one. So we might have Did had... you tell them the way you found the windsock? No, I didn't. <laughs> so when I bought this handheld thing, right, I mean, it's not expensive, expensive, but it's expensive when, like, you know, you just started working for yourself. It's like a hundred dog quid. And it came with a windsock. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the windsock went missing. And I was like, oh, well, I can't have it. I'll have to buy another windsock, but I didn't. Anyway, um, Becca was out the other night, and I was trying to entertain the cat as it started to get hot because I just wanted to have a bit of exercise and stuff. So I went to a cat toy box under the stair, uh, under the, the couch. Yeah, I've got this big bag of mine. And it's like a big bag, bag full of cat toys. Anyway, even I thought, oh, I'll get this mouse, this grey mouse. I've never seen that before. Pull it out. It's the fucking windsock. <laughs> it's just this fairy Becca thing. Becca had put it away as a mouse toy. <laughs> well, yeah, obviously, I... I mean, it must have been somewhere that would indicate it was most toy, but it's um, obviously we've moved recently, so I think it just went in the bags. Yeah, I mean, I'm glad that I found it again. I mean, you're lucky I didn't give it away because we gave someone a, a loads of old cat toys. Oh yeah, we, God, someone yeah. got. Um, we saw on Facebook this person had got a new rescue kitten very late in yeah. it, um, and was looking for things for it. Like she didn't have anything. 
um, Kev was like, just tell us to go to B&M. And I was like, oh, yeah. no. <laughs> I, mean, okay. I, I mean, I am a bit of a tit and a bit of a, an owl ass <laughs> when it comes to things like that. But you know the hassle of like, can you get there for four? Come to ours for four? No, I'll come at three. That suits me. Right, we'll move everything around then to give you what equates to like two ninety nine <laughs> worth of stuff. Well, we had this tunnel that she. But was that's because I'm an R ass. But go on. Well, not everyone can like easily afford. I it. know. Just I'm an, I, I just said I'm an R ass. Oh, uh, anyway. Um. So I, as she was coming around for this tunnel, which was like what we said. But as you said, you know, she was coming all the way. So I thought, well, I'll have a quick look and see what else we can throw in as well, because. Spoiled little kitten over here. The neighbour's cat has got more than she ever needs. Yeah, she's turned her nose up at more toys than most cats get in a lifetime. Yeah, she's got more than she needs. So I had a little rummage, and the suspicion from you is hilarious. As I like, I put together this bag of stuff that she doesn't like, and you were like, "Well, what's in that?" I said, "All right, have a look through it." And and you did. You had a proper like rummage through to check because just to make sure you haven't put the PlayStation VR in there or stuff you don't like me playing. I'm not going to give away anything she loves, am I? Obviously. Anyway, you're lucky it didn't end up in there. <laughs> I know, yeah. Because I thought point. she doesn't play with this. Yeah. Anyway, speaking of the cat, we might have, the neighbour's cat, we might have had um, a fifth to the canon of paranormal experiences. I think this is the fifth experience with a, with an asterisk. So the first four are set in stone. They've all happened. You've brought them to me. Yeah. Um, and we all know what they are. By the way, can I just say online, there's a large um, propensity of people who are, or proportion of people mm. who are um, in disbelief that you've rationalised a t-shirt flying out of the wardrobe. It didn't fly. But you did bring it to my Fell. attention. Yeah, all right. Anyway. For being messy. So there might be... <laughs> to your attention. So there's a fifth with an asterisk. So, mm. our Patreons heard about this yesterday, but we basically got a load of foam covers for this new um, new bench thing we've got in the kitchen. And um, it turns out phone's fucking expensive as well. Like, yeah, who but knew? That, that's another thing we, we won't go into. We thought it was going to be about a fiver, and it yeah, was not. It's not. <laughs> we were horrified. So, um, fans... we went to a material shop and walked out unable to afford know, this. Yeah, yeah. We were like, uh, ridiculous. No, um, so anyway, we finally got some, and they came in a big box. But it was like a um, a big tall box, like thin at the end, like but a really tall box. Anyway, I put it on its side because it was a warm night, and I said the kitten might like to climb in it. And like yeah. stay cool or just play with it. Yeah. So I literally said to you, didn't I, as we went to bed, I'm putting this box on its side. Yeah, I'm going to put it on its side. So it did. Mm-hmm. And then we came down in the morning and the box was upright. Yeah. Right. Now, the thing with that is, uh, to, the easiest way to describe, uh, you might just say, well, the cat done that. So yeah, because that's what I, I said. Well, she's maybe she's got in it and like she's tipped it. But the but thing is. You, if the way that the box is, is designed, you couldn't tip it. You couldn't tip it to be stood upright. Yeah, think about... So, to describe the shape of the box, I would say it's most similar to, like, the shape of a chest of drawers. Yeah. So, it's, like, taller yeah. and wider than it is width. Okay, there's only, like, a small width. Yeah, or, like, a tic-tac box. Yeah, but chest of drawers is, like, more accurate to the size of the box, isn't well, it? Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just a bit, yeah. Um. So, yeah, imagine, like, a chest of drawers, like, an empty box. Yeah. Like, like the shape, size and shape of a chest of drawers. So, you put it on its side, so the big size was it's flat. down. Yeah. And the bottom is, like, the long, thin bit. Yeah. So, when we came back up, it was upright again, which isn't hard to get it upright again. But the... If but you were inside from the, the box, box and yeah. you were only the size of a small cat, like, yeah. the, the centre of gravity, the set, your tipping point... It's not too fragile. She no. could do it. Not convinced she could do it in the first place because it was a heavy box too. And she's only a light mm. cat. She'd have to put... Yeah, the only way she could have done it is to be a full force run at the bottom of that box mm. and then to know she would then immediately have to lie down and try and hope that it wouldn't tip the other way. <laughs> hope. <Would> you, no, but, <laughs> the only way would be... But, but she wouldn't do that because we know how scared she is of everything. Yeah, that's a, she is, she's very scared of like stuff moving and that like... If you get out a bag and like you shake a big bag open, she doesn't like that. She no. runs away. But the second part, which makes it even more unrealistic is that she'd then have to do a near-perfect vertical jump out, out of the of box without, without disturbing tipping it. it. Yeah, without tipping it over, without touching it with a little pause. And to, to remind you of a, of a neighbour's cat anecdote, this is the cat who once fell off the arm of the chair and then convinced herself she couldn't <laughs> jump and crawled up the side of the chair. Then. A little mountain climber. little mountain climber, because you're like, I won't try and jump again because I failed. <laughs> but anyway, so we could have a fifth one there, with mm-hmm. a caveat. We don't know. Because like Becca was saying, I might have... I don't know why I would tip her up, but maybe I'd done it before. Yeah, it would seem strange after saying, literally at bedtime, I'm putting this on its side. At what point would you go, no, I will <laughs> I'm going to change my mind. Yeah. Um, but I was reminded, because I thought, yesterday we had another one, we didn't. You know, when I I, opened, I was putting stuff away, um, putting like the, dish, the dried dishes mm. away, I went to the cabinet and we were a plate down, and I was like, what? Where the hell is this plate? 
wait a minute, where is... No, seriously, we've definitely got two of this kind of plate. Yeah. Where is it? And I was looking around, and I was looking everywhere, and I was looking in, like... And I was like, if it's not in the draining board, and it's not there, like, where is it? Like, we don't... Neither of us eat in bed. You know, we don't yeah, like yeah. take plates upstairs. But what? So I even brought you in, and I was like, am I losing the plot here? Where is this place? And you're like, yeah, no, it's not there. Um, anyway, I turned around, and it was out. We'd had someone around doing some work, and I'd left them, like, biscuits and things on a yeah. plate. And it was over the other side. But I was just reminded how easily you can forget your own things you know well I mean? yeah also I was, there, was I was a like, bit, there was a bit of an example or oh, it's caveat episode six of something happening we both came in the other day we did have someone on his stepdad came around to do some work didn't he mm. but anyway and then at, at two days after he'd left we came in from being out <laughs> this is funny and we walk into the living room and you've got this big green plastic dog of course you do yeah um it's we call tic tac he's he's worth a pretty penny i'm sure he is yeah but anyway it's about like two foot off the floor, in it, and it's about two foot wide. It's a big bulky plastic. Yeah, you know, it's something yeah. that you really need in, in a small arty. living room. Quite arty. Um, anyway, he was just stood in the middle of the living room, and when we came in, we both went, "Why? Why is he there?" And the pair of us were like, "No, you said it first, but I was like, yeah, why the hell is he there?" Yeah, but same thing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. No, but I mean, no, but I mean, you you just like said it first. Is yeah, yeah, mean. but but then we, we we said, "Well, wait there, maybe." It, and we both rationalised it, and I'm agreeing with the rationalisation, yeah. that it must have been when his stepdad came around to paint where that normally sits. Oh, no, sits. that definitely was. No, because at first we were like, what the hell? And I was like, is the back door locked? And you said, yeah. And I was like, what? Now, it, in, obviously, you jumped to ghost, but I jumped to someone's messing with us, like someone's been in the house and they're messing with us. That was my yeah, like, yeah, but, concern. Yeah, but the interesting thing, and I, I agree with this, that this is what's taking place. I don't think it is a ghost. But the interesting thing is, that means that that day in between him leaving... And when we walked in, that that was there all along. Yeah, and we've just accepted it being there and stood over it. Yeah, no, it was. Because when, when we said, I, I can't remember which one of us it was who remembered, or I was like, oh, no, he came out, remember, he did that wall, so he moved everything out. And then that, for me, was like, a, oh, of course. You yeah, know, that's definitely what it was. Like, there's no doubt in my mind at all, that's definitely what it was. But yeah, it was there, because I think as well, because we'd had this delivery and he'd come round, and we had like so, and we'd put some stuff up as well, like a big mirror, which again had packaging. Just the living room was a bit of a tip, basically. We had mm. this big cardboard box, another big piece of cardboard packaging. Stuff had been pulled out, and I think we put some of the stuff back. But so you, you the think, dog being in the middle, it was just like among yeah, a load I, of stuff. I, I think it's, I think you're right. The living room is a bit of a tip, and I think we've both subconsciously thought that needs sorting at some point. Yeah. And then I think you actually moved the cardboard stuff away before we went out. Mm. So therefore, when we come back. It so doesn't he look like it's a lot more congruous. But, uh, yeah. but there's a big green dog yeah. in the middle of the living room. Yeah, which looks a lot more incongruous. So, yeah. but we will see. We will see. No, I'm like I'm. I'm absolutely sure that's what it was. Because what literally when we said he'd move, I was like, oh, of course. Yeah, but isn't it interesting that. though? Isn't it interesting that you seem to be more open to weird things taking place? Well, no, that's what I mean. When at first we saw it, I my thought wasn't paranormal. It was someone's messing with us, like someone being in the house. I think that'd be te- much more terrifying than a ghost. And I, know, I don't mean just someone being in the house. That's obviously most terrifying. I mean, somebody being in a house who would do things like move the dog four <laughs> inches. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, it's like really sinister. <laughs> this will show them. I'll hide a plate. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so we found him a proper home. Because I think he was in the kitchen for a bit, but now we've got a table. He won't fit in the kitchen anymore. We're talking about the green dog now. Yes, we've yeah, Just using him. Anyway, we, we, there is the ghost stories are coming. Mm-hmm. So, Reddit Corner. We've gone to Reddit when I say we, me and I. And when I say I found something, I mean I found a title of something and it looks about the right length for the show. I've not read any of it. I'm going to pass this phone to you. And you're going to tell us a story, or three little stories in this case, three from little your little corner of Reddit. <laughs> little corner of Reddit. Welcome. <laughs> yeah, well it is. You don't have to do it like that. Um, so, this is from a user called Mindless Dirt. I'm obviously the proud son of Mr. and Mrs. Mindless Dirt. Why? Carry on, because he's obviously got mum and dad. Weird, okay. All right, then test um, you, baby, Mindless Dirt. I don't <laughs> give a fuck, baby. Okay. What was that? Fucking <laughs> <laughs> hell. It's a nice little size. We should I need to stop watching, like, 90s films. <laughs> um, okay, the title of this is Three Childhood Experiences, 1983 to 1987. So, before we begin, welcome to Reddit Corner with Becca. Princess. Sorry, just into mild interruption, our cat is acting like she's seen another cat. And I'm just going to confirm, is there another cat? There will be, because she did it yesterday in the was. She watches birds, too. Yeah. Anyway, crack on, this is a ghost podcast. Let's begin. You interrupted. Well. You're the one who interrupted. Well. Well, pipe down. Well, I'm a tit. Carry on. I'm allowed. Uh, Would you (laughs) (laughs) talk? I've had a Red Bull. Carry on. Let's begin. 
One of my earliest paranormal memories, I was about six years old and lived in an old weatherboard house built in the 50s. My room was at the rear of the house facing the backyard in the sleep out part adjoining the laundry. I was having trouble sleeping because it was a warm night. My bedroom door was open and I could see into the laundry. I heard a creaking noise like the floorboard shifting so I looked up to the doorway. I thought it was my parents coming through to use the toilet or something. However, I didn't see them walk past and it was dark with a little bit of weak street lighting outside. I kept staring at the doorway because I kind of sensed someone there. I then heard a really deep male voice which said, Tonight you will sleep on the edge of your grave. Fucking hell! The voice came from the empty doorway. I was so scared and freaking out. I yelled, go away! Then, then there was this deep laughing that went on for about five to ten seconds. My parents had been in bed and heard me yell, go away, and came to see what was wrong. That wasn't the end of the instance in this house. So that's story one? That's story one. You're going, tonight you're going to sleep on the end of your grave? Yeah. That's a long on sentence for, a, for a, a disembodied voice, isn't it? Tonight. You go, <gasps> what was that? You're going to sleep on the edge of your grave. Second left after the bingo hall. Make sure you brush your teeth. Anyway. Yeah, also, is it like is it that sinister? Like, if your grave's there, but it's going to be there in, like, 50 years. You know, uh, I don't know. All right, no? I don't, don't know what you anyway. mean, but carry on. Story Number two. two. The same address about a year or so later. It was daytime. My mum, dad and I were home. My dad was outside, I was in my bedroom and my mum was in the shower. I heard a really loud thump in the roof. I got up and walked around, looking at the roof, wondering what it was. It was then I heard footsteps above me. I could hear the steps moving directly above me, so I followed underneath. With each step it was apparent it was travelling towards the bathroom where my mum was. The roof access slash manhole was also in the bathroom. As I got near the bathroom door, my mum came flying out with a towel wrapped round her, nearly knocking me over. She was screaming out for my dad and panicking, saying there's someone in the roof. He didn't believe her, but then I chimed in and said I'd heard it too. So we got up into the manhole and looked around, but couldn't see anything. We never heard anything up there again, and never had animals or anything in our roof or around the property. Whatever it was, was very heavy. Mm. Now that is interesting. If two people have heard it, I'll give them that. Yeah, yeah. I wish when two people hear it. Go on then. Hit us with your best shot. Okay. That means give us story um, three. I also like it when someone refers to themselves as chiming in because that's usually like a, quite a derogatory thing that someone <laughs> else says. Like, oh, and she piped up. Yeah, so I, being yeah. the family bellend, chimed <laughs> yeah. in. Story number three. Story number three. At this same address, I can't remember my age, but I was probably around eight years old. It was dark, and I was in my bedroom, which faced the rear yard. I had large sliding windows with curtains on the top half of the wall. The bottom half was solid fibro. I saw a light shining on the back of the curtain. I thought it was someone outside with a torch shining it on my curtain from the rear garden. It was a circular white to yellow light with well-defined edges about 10 to 15 centimetres in diameter. It was kind of dancing around the curtain, kind of doing figure eights and some other random movements. Then all of a sudden a second identical light appeared on the curtain and they were both dancing around each other. I was watching them for what I'd estimate about a minute. Then this is where it gets weird. The lights dropped below the window and curtain and now appeared on the solid fibre wall. I couldn't make sense of what I was seeing because I knew light couldn't travel through solid objects. I thought maybe somehow the lights were actually coming from the inside. I just couldn't figure it out. I couldn't tell if the lights were three dimensional or not. All of a sudden they just vanished. End of stories. Interesting. I do like that last one because, uh, as I've told you before, one of the weirdest things I've ever seen was in my dad's house. I was sat on the couch watching TV and over where the computer was kept, which was like in that, you know, the back part where my dad's table is now. Oh, yeah. Um, and I was facing the TV and next thing, out of the corner of my eye, I see something. Like, this is dark, so I've got no lights on just watching TV. It's so in the middle of the night. I don't put lights on in my dad's if, if I'm watching TV. I'll just sit there in darkness with the telly on as the only light. And I seen something in the corner of my eye. And anyway, when I turned around and looked, there was a green circle. You know, like that, the image of a snake eating itself. Mm. So like that, as in like not a solid light is what I mean. So like an, an outline of a thing. And it was rotating. A ring. A ring. Yeah, that's a better way of saying it. <laughs> you know, like the mythical creature <laughs> of affinity. Um, it was like a ring, yeah. Mm. Or a circle, if you will. <laughs> um, but it was rotating across the wall. But slowly, in, but the speed of it was like, not held by human hand. 
you know what I mean? It wasn't like a jerky sort of fast right. thing, like a laser pen or something. Yeah. It was moving at a very constant, specific speed. Mm. And then it just blinked out. Very weird. Very weird. Yeah. Don't know what to say, do you? Bamboozled you. But yes, bamboozled. With rings. Indeed. So what's your thoughts on the story you just read? Um, yeah, the light, the light is kind of an interesting one where it's like, oh, it's someone outside, it's coming through, and then it goes through a wall, and you're like, wait a minute. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's what I really that. like that's about that funny, one. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Because um, we've had that, haven't we, as well, in the old flat. In the old flat, we've had like what looks like laser pens, but they can't be because we're three floors up, um, dancing across the walls. Laser pens? No, Back I remember like, the circle of lights, but that was the holes in the curtain. No, I'm talking about um, like maybe one or two years in. To live in there, right. we've seen like red lights on the wall. If you remember, and you were going, no, that must be shining through from the flats over the road. And I was like, Becky, you cut, there's a wall in the way. We had this full debate, mm. um, but anyway, yeah, no, I maintain it was the flats across. Because um, one interesting optical thing that happened, so we had it was like lying in bed one night, and this circle of light, like a few of them were like traveling, seemed to like travel all over the wall suddenly. I'm like, what the hell? And it took ages to work out that the the blinds was like a drop dark blind but at the bottom of it there were three or four circles and in the flat like down the road in the flat there was a, a road that came up towards and our building was at the top facing it and it, when cars came up that road the headlights would be captured and it would go through the circles oh, obviously yeah, as yeah. the headlights were moving the circle of lights would move but it took ages to work out what it was so. yeah probably weird probably yeah. weird no, anyway really this has been a, a hefty well you know you haven't been on for a while so it's a hefty becker's reddit corner mm -hmm. oh by the way a hefty edition of Becker's Red Corner. Just because you normally get very offended if I say hefty Becker's Red Corner. <laughs> well, yeah, I think so. Anyway, mm. so jokes on your... You're not, you're not big, are you? What a weird thing to suddenly come up with without prompting. I know, yeah. As if, as, if, as if one of us was thinking it and felt they needed to, I know. to deny it, I know. even though no one I'm was I'm just keeping it in it. because it, I agree it was weird. You've got a very good figure. I know. Not that that's important in life. Just saying. This Kevin is reversing. This beep, Kevin is beep, reversing. Beep. So. Are you pleased it started raining? I'm fucking made up. It started raining. Um, I, I really can't put into words. I, I hate the lies everyone tells themselves when it's hot and sunny. Isn't this lovely? As they're sweating through the clothes. That's not a lie. I loved it. You're a liar. I'm not. I like it. Okay. Fair enough. Are you going to say goodbye anyway? Thank you for visiting Reddit Corner with Becca. There you go. That's kind of kinky, wasn't it? Shouldn't have been. Anyway, thanks, Beck. We'll speak to you next week. Welcome. Bye, guys.